okay so let's continue with our like uh, git series and we are like uh, covering the github actions all right and so let's see what we have covered till now so till now uh, we have covered a couple of things first thing is we see the basic workflow so let me open this yeah we see the basic workflow what is name run name what are the different types of events uh, how we can define the job how we can define the name how we can define the runner all right when do, when we have to use run when we have to use uses when we have to run uh, multiple jobs then we have to use the pipe symbol all right and then we see how we can define the variables and how we can access those variables and we also see how we can define the workflow level uh, environment uh, variables and we can define the job level we can define the environment variables at the step level all right and then we see uh, how we can define the variable based upon the environments. Environment is like dev, QA, prod, pre prod. So we create three environment and we define the some environment and we define with some different value. And how to access, we see by defining the environment variable here. All right. Then we see uh, some different uh, uh, third party actions available as an example, upload artifact. So how to use the upload active artifact, what is the advantage? And it is going to create the artifacts then we see the download artifacts so when to use the download artifacts so we use the version 4 and uh, that's it and then we see the expression status so in the expression status uh what we see like uh, uh, we make this test uh to fail so this test to fail but if this test is going to fail then this job is not going to be done but we want whether the test is going to be failed or passed we want our report should get uploaded so we added some status check. So if not cancelled or if success, if always, if failure. So we see a couple of things. But here, there are a couple of things. So we can do in some different way as well. So there are two more options. So today we are going to cover uh, this continuum error and the timeout minutes. So if we go open the docs.github.com and under the using workflow, the workflow syntax, there are a couple of uh, workflow syntax like a couple of workflow syntax we already cover like uh, a job what is runs on what is steps what is name what is uses what is with we already covered a couple of things so you can see here what is runs on what is needs what is name what is job id we already covered a couple of things now we are going to go what is when to use continue and error what and what is timeout minute because these are the things which we are actually going to use in our actual project. So continue on error and timeout minutes. All right. So, so one thing is that continue, continue on error. Uh, we can use both at step level and the job level. So it can be applied at the step level and the job level. So as an, in the previous example, let me open the previous example. So this is our previous example. So what we did is, so when our, this step is going to be run. So this step is going to fail. All right, so this step is going to fail and this step did not get executed if we if we uh, comment this right so this step is not going to exit so to execute this step what we did is we mentioned if always or if success or if failure or if not equal to cancel so we mentioned this so that this step also going to execute all right but uh, what we can do is we can we can use one more parameter continue on error so i can show you the difference so let me let me create a different workflow file and copy it control a control c let me create a different workflow file seven continue on error and timeout dot yaml because we know uh, the file should be in the yaml format so let's copy paste let me rename the file name rename the workflow continue on error and time of minutes all right so let me remove this let me remove this so if i remove this so we know this test is going to fail because in our last video we make this test uh go forcefully going to fail let me show you so we forcefully failed this test. So if this test is going to be failed, then this step is not going to be executed because there is no if condition, if always or if something. But we want, we know uh, this is, uh, this. we know the, well, like whenever we write some test, we know this test is going to be failed. All right. So this test is going to be failed. 
because the functionality is yet to be created or some person is already working on it so we know this test is going to be failed but we want the other step is going to be like uh, work all right so instead of uh, like uh, put if always if always is always going to be run right so what we can do is we can use continue on error true so continue on error true means even if this step is going to be error then this this uh, like uh, uh, state is going to be pass so one difference i can show you one minute let me open that so if you go to the actions so this is our expression status check so in our expression status check we see we let me show you so we see our this step run run test is failing so run test is failing and we put if always or if not equal to cancel so this step is going to be executed but if you noticed if you notice our whole workflow is marked as red because test is actually going to fail all right that was not expected we want the next step to be executed which is fine but this was not expected so that's why our workflow is going to be failed all right red but we want we know like uh, the test is going to be failed all right and because of maybe version issue or maybe something because we are doing some testing on some different version so that test is going to be failed we want the whole workflow should not fail and the and the further steps is going to be run if further step because if there are multiple steps and if we put if always only in this then the further step is not going to be executed because this step is going to fail and only this step is going to be run but not the further step we want the further step is also going to be run or the further job because currently there is a one job we want the further job is also going to be run so we can use a continue on error so let's implement it git status so what i think i did some git add github workflow 7 one second let me check what change i did in this one okay there is only one space which is which is okay so good status with commit minus m continue on error good push so we push that now let's try to run it so our workflow is available you can see seven continue and click on it because this is uh, set as workflow dispatch event so we need to manually trigger it so click on the run pro and click on run workflow so refresh it now let's see what is going to be happen because we did not mention if always but we, we we are going to see whether the next job is going to be triggered or not so installing dependency is running a run test we know it's going to be failed so run test is, is failed we know run test failed and we want uh, this uh, store the html report should run which run which is fine and we want our whole uh, whole workflow should mark as green so now our whole workflow is marked as green but in earlier case whole workflow is not not marked as green all right okay so this is one thing so continue an error so here continue error we are using on the step level so this is one step but we can use on the job level as well so let me create a different job so second job runs on ubuntu server so let me set dependency needs uh unit test and let's define the steps steps name first step echo 
not echo run echo this is first step of second job now let's create a another job second step run Echo. This is second step for second job, and we want to manually failing this job because we are failing this job. All right, so we are failing this job now. Third job runs on. Ubuntu server needs second job steps name first step run echo this is first step for second job name Second step, run, sleep for 30 seconds, all right. So all this job is going to be run in like a uh, sequential. So first unit test is going to be run, then second job because there is a dependency, then third job. And because we know second job is going to be failed. So if second job is going to be failed, then third job is not going to be executed, right? So let's see. I did second and third job. So let's run the workflow. So our pipeline has been created. Your first job, second job, third job. So first job is running. So once the first job is going to complete, then the second job is going to be run, then the third job. Let's see what is going to be happen. So which step is running? Okay, it is running. So we know test is going to fail, which is fine. But we know uh, we mentioned continue and error. So that's why it run. And now second job is running. In the second job, okay, it's waiting for the runner. Sometime it took some time to start the job. So just a second. It is still waiting. Did I mention the runner wrong? Okay, so runner I mentioned wrong Ubuntu server instead of Ubuntu latest. So let me cancel the workflow and let me push it back. Let's restart. So run workflow, run workflow. So job has been started. All the three jobs will run in sequential order because we have set the dependency. So unit test is going to be run and all the step is going to be run. Checkout repository, setting up the Python, installing the dependency and running the test. Test is going to be fail, we know, but we have mentioned continue on error. In this step so that's why the further step is going to be executed because we i have mentioned continue on error we can apply it on a step level and the job level so here uh, we have applied on step level so because this step failed but still uh, further step is like uh, executed 
right? Because we have mentioned continue and error. Now, second job uh, is going to fail. So because we have mentioned exit one, so second job is going to fail. And if you know second job is going to fail, so third job did not get triggered. Third job did, did not even get triggered because second job is, is failed. Let me show you again. Second job failed, so third job did not triggered. But we want, we want, even if the second job is going to fail, third job should trigger. So what we can do is we can mention continue on error. Continue on error true. So even if this job is going to fail, uh, the third job, third job is going to be triggered. So here continue on error I mentioned at the job level. Here continue on error I mentioned on the step level. So we can mention both the level. Good comment minus M. Added. Continue on error on job level. Let's start the workflow. Refresh it. Okay, so the workflow has been started. So now, even if the second job is going to fail, so the expectation is third job should start because why the third job is going to be started? Because we have mentioned even if the second job is going to be failed, so it still should it still should continue. All right. So okay, almost completed. Yeah. So unit test completed. Second job is going to be started. Second job failed, but still uh, third job started you could see third job got started because we mentioned continued error so even though this job is going to be in error state third job is going to be started and we have mentioned some sleep command so it is going to like uh, some take time and it's going to be sleep for i think 30 seconds so let's wait for 16 second all right so this is continuing error and even if you go come here so prevents a job from failing from a step level set to true to allow a job to pass when the step fails so we have mentioned steps continuing error so if you search continue on error and come here so you see continuing error we can apply on step level as well we can apply on the job level as well so on the right hand side where i'm moving the cursor so we covered both the things on the continuer on the step level as well continuer and the job level as well so this is very useful in like our actual project when we are actually like working and if you see our whole workflow is in the green state our whole workflow is in the green state all right okay so now the other thing is the timeout. so timeout minute is also one of the important parameter so let me click on the timeout timeout minute also we can use on step level so you could see job job id steps and st uh, timeout minute also we can use on the uh, job level as well timeout minutes all right so what is timeout minute timeout minutes let, let's suppose uh, sometimes we like our job should be run in specific time all right so if if that job is taking longer we want that job should should cancel all right as an example uh, as an example uh, i want uh, this third job this third job should be executed in 20 second all right so i can mention timeout minutes so basically timeout minute parameter should be in the minutes so that's why it, it can't be second so let put be one minute i want this job should be completed in one minute. And we know this job is going to be completed in one minute because here is 30 seconds. And this job is this step is maximum take only one second. So 30 plus 131. And nothing is uh, going to give us the error. Right. But let's suppose I have mentioned here uh, 80, 80 seconds, sleep for 80 seconds. But for the job level, the whole job we said it should complete it in 60 seconds. This step is also taking 80 seconds. So what it will do, this job maximum wait for 60 seconds because this step it did not get completed. So the whole job is going to be cancelled. So let's see. Is it commit minus M? Edit timeout. That's good push. 
So let me start the workflow. So first, in the first job, what we have, we have continue an error on the uh, continue or error on the step level because we know uh, unit test is going to fail, but still we want our HTML report should be going to upload it. So continue error on the step level. All right, so it failed, but still the next step is going to be executed, which is, which is perfectly fine. Now, now we have continue an error on the second job because we know second second job is going to be failed because we have uh, exit one. Why it is shown twice? Okay, not sure why it's why it is shown like this. So uh, this is going to fail, but still third job is third job is uh, like uh, running. So third job is running, and in the third job we have mentioned timeout parameter. So timeout is sixty seconds, but uh, this step is will take more than sixty seconds. So ideally this job third job should get cancelled automatically because if it is taking longer, then it should cancel automatically. And by default timeout parameter is three sixty. 360 minutes. So this parameter is in the minutes because timeout minutes, it's not the second, it's minutes. So this is 360 minutes. So just to save the resources or sometimes we know the build children uh, in this time, like our services should going to be up in this time. If it is taking more than that, then there is some more issue and no need to like uh, keep waiting because sometimes our GitHub pipelines run uh, like overnight we have scheduled so currently we have not covered the schedule operation so schedule generally chrome expression we can give here here currently we are working on the workflow dispatch which is manually but in the coming videos we will see how we can schedule our workflow like let's trigger the workflow at night at 21 pm or 9 pm 8 pm right so you could see second job second job is sleeping for 80 minutes so the operation got cancelled so the operation got cancelled all right so operation got cancelled and if the operation got cancelled, our whole workflow is in the error state. Whole workflow is in the error state. So this is the benefit of the timeout minute. All right. So these are like just, just a vague example I, I show you. All right. So here timeout minutes I use on the job level, but you can use on the step level as well. All right. So idly I can use here on the step level. So how can I use? So here I can mention timeout minutes. All right. So it's very useful parameter, uh, timeout minutes and continue. Continuum error is very useful, very useful because sometimes uh, what we did is our projects uh, uh, like uh, uh, using some different uh, versions, all right? And we know our test is going to be run on, on Python version uh, 3.11, Python version 3.12, Python version 3.10, but it's going to fail on the Python version 3.6, we know. All right, so we can set some strategy here. Okay, so if it is going to run on 3.11, 3.10, 3.12, then it's fine. If it, if it is going to fail on 3.6, which is expected, we know that is expected. We know that is going to fail on 3.6 or 3.7, that is expected. But if that is expected, and we want to test that as well, because we want to test the whole workflow. We know test is going to fail, but we, don't, we want to test the whole workflow. So this is expected. So if this is expected and this step is going to fail, then further step is not going to be run, but we want further step is going to be run. All right. So that's why we can mention continuous error because otherwise we have to mention if success, if, if success or failed, if success or failed, if success or failed on each level. All right. But uh, this is like great option. So that's it. Uh, that's the end of the video. So yeah, uh, thank you.